visited Iowa Tuesday touting his administration's efforts to combat high gas prices. New inflation numbers show record high prices across the board. Let's talk about what it all means for your bottom line and for the president's record low approval numbers with tonight's Bream team panel. Fox News contributors Leslie Marshall and Jason Chaffetz. Great to see you both. Thank you. Hi Shannon. Okay, the Wall Street Journal editorial board tonight says this isn't Putin's inflation. They say the inflation trend began in earnest a year ago at the onset of the Biden presidency. It's accelerated for most of the last 12 months, long before Mr. Putin decided to invade. If you want to know why Americans are sour about the economy, even as jobs are plentiful, this is it. Their real wages are falling while the prices of everyday goods and services are rising fast. Jason, how does the administration handle this, not only from a substantive viewpoint, but also from a messaging? viewpoint. Well, just blaming Putin and to some degree Trump is not going to cut it. I mean, uh, this uh, Joe Biden was supposed to be the man with the plan, and I don't think he has a plan. Real wages are down 2.7 percent year over year. Uh, record prices. I went to go fill up my F-150 today. It, it topped $100. Uh, it, it's just an absolute disaster of their own making by spending records amount of money that wasn't Putin or anybody else and by it, the Democrats have the House and Senate and the presidency and by shutting down our energy sector that's why you see six dollar plus gasoline as you see on the screen so the hill today talks about how tough this is going to be for Democrats in a midterm year which we know historically the first midterm election after a president's election is not good for his or her party so far his maybe one day her okay so they say this Democrats are facing a nightmare scenario with about six months to go before the midterm elections inflation immigration the war in Ukraine and the still lingering COVID-19 pandemic make for a dreadful political atmosphere for President Biden's party they go on to quote this guy I think this is going to be a biblical disaster that's from one Democratic strategist who did not wish to be named Leslie I would not say biblical and uh, COVID by the way polls show most people consider it no big deal and it's behind them whether they're left or right but it is the economy stupid right James Carville mm -hmm. sent that back in the 90s during the Clinton administration and that hasn't changed before James Carville said that and even today uh, in, in 2022 uh, that is what voters want and it doesn't matter if they're Democrat or Republican and even though we can you know try and find some silver linings not with inflation but we looked at the stock market today and largest retailers saw in the first 30 minutes minutes a two to eight percent gain we see gas prices have dropped six percent uh, on a national average and hopefully that will be a trend but right now what Americans are feeling uh, is not necessarily uh, some of those glimmers of hope and what Americans and it's not just what they're reading in the headlines because you can even read that numbers are good it's what Americans are feeling and certainly Americans feel it most uh, more so at the gas pump and and that really hurts a lot of individuals because they need to fill up their cars to go to work mm -hmm. or maybe they can't use their car and they have to find a different mode of transportation so the, you know the bottom line is the bottom line in, in the economy and that is going to be very difficult for any party my own party included um, if things even if your party is not to blame for them uh, whether you in inherited it or whether it's just a worldwide mess which it is right now and certainly well, Putin invading Ukraine uh, did not help that well to that point um, for Republicans who would say this isn't a Putin issue um, economic counsel advisor Jesse Lee tweeted this Putin and Senator Rick Scott a Republican fully in lockstep in blaming Biden for Putin's price hike so surprising Jason what do you make about an economic council advisor in the Biden administration linking Putin with a Republican senator um, it's an act of desperation if people see through it. The Democrats have the House and Senate and the presidency. They can try to point the fingers, but when you're in charge, it's not a good look to go out and say, hey, it's somebody else's fault. And again, I don't think Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have a plan. If they have one, they should state it because it's not working, as my colleague, uh, former colleague uh, Jim Jordan liked to say, if the, if the Biden plan is working, how come it's not working? Democrats don't have any answers to these questions. Well, and Americans don't buy that either because uh, the polling, at least on the president, how he's handling of economy and inflation, recent Fox News poll said 59% disapprove of how he's handling the economy, 66% disapprove of how he's handling inflation. Uh, final word to you, Leslie, on how he tries to handle those numbers headed into the midterms. 
Now, one, one of the things that we all know, and, and it doesn't matter, again, Democrat or Republican, who you want to blame and who is in power, is the Federal Reserve has the power, the most power when it comes to inflation. And a lot of people, uh, left and right, have blamed the Federal Reserve for acting too slowly uh, when it comes to uh, interest rates, uh, not being as aggressive, and, you know, people not just saying they've been slow, but they've been passive. Uh, so, the, you know, it, it, whether it's Donald Trump, uh, Joe Biden, or uh, Biden back in the day, George him. Washington. Biden it, it reappointed is, him. It, 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 it is the it is the Federal Reserve. All right, we got to leave it there, and I thank you both, and I hope you'll come back soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank hope you. So. <laughs>